one larger panel versus two smaller panels. For reasons that will become more clear in the build videos, I'd prefer to have two smaller panels per side rather than one large panel. So the question that I want to answer today is, can I get away with that? I'm going to be comparing a single 600 by 400 panel and then comparing that against two 300 by 400 mil panels, each with their own exciter. Okay, so I've finished taking my measurements and I've brought them into REW, Room EQ Wizard, for analysis. Uh, just before we jump into the measurements themselves, I just want to show you this. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, you might have noticed that some of my sweep measurements had this crazy sloping high frequency uh, at the upper end there. And I even had comments saying, like, you're going to do something about that. Um, but my response was, I can't hear any of that. You know, the sound coming out of the panel doesn't reflect the harshness of, of what's being shown at the upper end there. And as you can see there, it says no signal. So that was when I accidentally made a sweep with the volume turned all the way down on the amp. So no sound actually came out of the panel during this measurement. And yet we can see this line that goes up to 90 decibels and that was not audible at all. This is telling me, I think that there's some sort of noise in my signal chain somewhere that's causing that. So with that in mind, this is the measurement from my larger panel, the 60 by 40 centimeter panel. So you can see that sloping high frequency that I'm talking about there. We're more interested in the mid range and really the mid base. So at this size panel, 60 by 40 centimeters, you can see that it's really not producing much of anything below about 115 Hertz, just drops off really quickly. Certainly there's absolutely nothing down at the sort of subwoofer ranges, 20 to 80 Hertz, uh, and even sort of 80 to 110, 115 Hertz is pretty weak. So I think if we had a larger panel to test, then we would see this extension a little bit further down, but at this size, this is where it's at. This is fine. If you're using a separate subwoofer, you can just run that subwoofer up to 110 Hertz, 115 Hertz and cross them over there. And uh, from here on up, it's looking pretty good. Now, if we take a look at the smaller panel, this is the 30 by 40 centimeter panel. So literally half the area of the larger panel. And again, this reinforces that notion that uh, bigger panels will give lower frequency response. They're virtually identical above 250 Hertz around there, but then down here at a 220 Hertz, the smaller panel just drops like a rock. Whereas the larger panel has a much more gradual uh, roll off here. In fact, from the drop off here and the drop off here is almost exactly a hundred Hertz difference. At these low frequencies, that's very significant. What is interesting is this next measurement. This is the two small panels together. And this actually looks pretty good. If we have a look at 250 Hertz, where the small panel started dropping off hard, we've just got a gentle slope here and it sort of rolls off gently all the way down to, you know, around here, 115 Hertz. So let's compare that to the larger panel and look at that. Not a lot of difference at all. So at 115 Hertz ish, five and a half decibels difference at that frequency. And you can see as it comes up, it sort of narrows. There's around three decibels difference there and so on until, you know, above about 220, 230 Hertz, they're virtually indistinguishable from there on up. If we compare that to the single small panel again, the difference is pretty apparent, right? The two panels behave a lot more like the single large panel than they do the single small panel. And that is actually surprising to me. 
I can only assume that between those two small panels, there is some sort of coupling going on. You might have heard of mid-bass coupling in the context of left and right speakers being you know, at the right distance apart, then they'll give it a stronger mid-bass. If you move them too far apart, then the mid-bass drops off. Potentially something like that is happening here. I'm not sure, but this is a very interesting result to me, and I think it definitely bears more attention. So so next we're going to have a look at one of my other favorites, the waterfall measurement, the large panel. So for those who don't know, the waterfall is basically showing us how much stored energy there is at any given frequency. So this line that the top of the waterfall here is the frequency response. So front to back, the Z axis is showing us how long the signal remained at each frequency. So if you can picture like a bell ringing and that initial hit is quite quick, but then the frequency keeps ringing for some time after that. So this is a measure of that at each frequency on the way up. Now, as you can see, it's all pretty clean. If we have a look at the scale on the right here, this is 500 milliseconds out to the bottom of the chart. Um, there's no problems at all along the mid-range here and the treble, even with that big spike. We can see that there is significant ringing here at about 250 hertz, so that's something that would need addressing. And then having a look down here, it drops off hard, but there's this huge resonance down at 50 hertz. This really isn't a problem because I would never try and use this panel down to 50 hertz. Um, that's probably some sort of resonance and clamping the panel differently might eradicate that altogether. But certainly if you're crossing it over, this is not going to be an issue. Uh, now what's interesting here, if we have a look at the smaller panel, it looks significantly worse in the base region. In fact, have a look at this one, uh, about 60 hertz. This is a huge spike all the way out at the end of the 500 milliseconds. Um, this could be ringing for ages. And of course, along here, We've got more resonances that just aren't apparent on the bigger speaker. It looks a lot cleaner. I think what's going on here is we've got the same signal, uh, but all that energy is being put into a panel that's half the size. So it's not really surprising to me that it's struggling at these lower uh, frequencies. Once again, the nice thing about the two panel is that that completely, well, almost completely disappears. And we've gone back to looking very clean. And again, I think this is because we've got the same signal, the same amount of energy. Instead of going into this small panel with a smaller area, um, it's being divided equally between the two panels. So each panel is really only getting half as much energy put into it in the first place. So we can see this very minimal sort of ringing down at the bottom end here. Uh, in fact, it's comparable to the larger panel. Perhaps that's not surprising since the area of the two is exactly the same in this case. Okay, I think that's everything for today. I really just wanted to share it out there. If anybody knows or has any good ideas about why those two panels might be a more similar response to the larger panel, I'd love to hear them. And uh, you know, perhaps I can roll those ideas into my next test. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.